You don't need strength as much as speed. We're fragile creatures. It takes less than a pound of pressure to cut skin. Pound of pressure? I'm thinking it's less than an ounce for this tactical fighting dagger by Boker, the Applegate Fairborn combat knife. You know, the extent of my input on knife fighting is that I feel that I can say with some confidence that the Boker Applegate knife is fully ambidextrous and perfectly mirrored for identical operation left or right-handed. I can add that it does feel balanced in my hand, but I'm not really knowledgeable enough to say if it's really the proper balance for the ambidextral knife fighter. But this knife exudes quality and it is dripping in lethality. This thing is orders of magnitude more of both than my old trusted box opening Gerber Applegate folder. Now the signatures. For me it's a meaningful signature. And I think that by the end of this video series you too will find that a knife like this will be a terrific personal reward for developing point shooting skills point shooting skills. And if you take Applegate's shooting technique into the ambidextrous realm, you might want to reward yourself with one or more of the different versions of the Boker Applegate Fairborn knives. Maybe someday there will be an Amgun Applegate or Ambigate or Applegate knife signature knife. Now who is this Rex Applegate? Rex Applegate joined the US Army in 1940 and before the United States entered the war he was transferred to the Office of Strategic Services of the US Department of War. Colonel Rex Applegate trained special forces in close combat and founded the School for Spies and Assassins. He was also appointed to, the, to guard President Roosevelt. His military intelligence training center instructors were rotated in and out of theater, returning with feedback to improve the techniques they developed there. Kind of similar to what uh, I believe uh, Brandon Webb did with the uh, Navy SEALs sniper program. After the war he continued as a consultant instructor and authored several books, Bullseyes Don't Shoot Back, Shoot Back, and some several uh, Killed or Kill or Get Killed, and other books on knife fighting and pistol fighting. Bullseyes Don't Shoot Back was by Rex Applegate uh, in conjunction with Michael Janich and is probably the most important book written on fighting with handguns. It is based upon and elaborates upon the video called Shooting for Keeps that was produced by Paladin and Press in 1996. And that video can now be found on YouTube. I'll include a link down in the description. Now while uh, Kill or Get Killed by Rex Applegate is kind of his magnum opus on uh, fighting, knife and gun fighting, a uh, lesser known book is this uh, Combat Use of the Double-Edged Fighting Knife. Uh, it's a little bit harder to find than some of the other books, uh, but I'll include a link down where you can actually get a copy. It's, it's not very... Uh, it's pretty, it's almost a booklet size, but uh, actually very good, a quick summary of the Applegate fighting knife and uh, you know how the design came to be, why, why the design features of this knife. So highly recommend it. Now the other signature on this knife, William E. Fairburn, who participated in over 200 gun battles during his career.
And also, he worked with uh, Eric Sykes. Both were English officers operating in Shanghai between about 1900 and 1940. And they were both enormous influences on Rex Applegate. It is Rex Applegate and William Fairburn's signatures that are featured on the Boker produced dagger. You know, these sharp pointy things. I'm pretty sure my heart rate is kind of a little bit elevated just when handling this dagger. I mean, it's just just brimming with lethality, the sharpness. Uh, it's just, it's a weapon. And uh, it's not as, you know, I'm not saying that as a muling fanboy, but it's kind of a physiological response to this instrument's obvious lethality. Which brings us to one of the key premises of the Rex Applegate handgun fighting technique. The natural physiological response of the human body to threat is one, to crouch. Crouch. And then two, is a visual focus on the threat. It's kind of like tunnel vision. That tunnel vision, it's visual focus on the threat, not on your, you know, it's not on your sights, it's on the threat and in fact the tendency will be if you bring your pistol up and you're facing a threat is to bring the pistol down off the threat so that you have unobstructed view of the threat which is one of the reasons that so often when in a real life and death situation people gunfighters tend to shoot a little bit low because they're moving that pistol away out of the visual path to the threat and end up shooting at the feet of the of the aggressor. Another, another physiological response to a lethal threat is auditory exclusion, extremely elevated heart rate, which um, is also correlated with degraded fine motor skills, leaving only coarse muscle movements and coarse muscle control. Now, a lot of trainers will use like physical exertion to try to simulate uh, this physio physiological response to a lethal threat. But fear's hormonal dump is not quite the same as physical exertion. Now, one thing is the difference between anticipated danger Whereas if you're going into a situation uh, with a rifle anticipating a combat situation, perhaps you can suppress some of these physiological responses a bit. You know, I think most people can understand the, uh, you know, the physiological response to a threat. Uh, we've all kind of experienced, you know, that little fright or whatever. You, so you can kind of intuitively pick up on that. But if you want details, check out Sharpening the Warrior's Edge. This is by Bruce Seidel. But it's uh, Sharpening the Warrior's Edge, the Psychology and Science of Training. Uh, highly recommended. You know, we talk about uh, the Rex, when we get into the Rex Applegate pistol shooting technique, is that when someone tr generates a physiological response in you, you attempt to generate a physio physiological response in them right back. Now, in the next three videos, we will cover, video two would be point shooting, and then we're going to go to the what I call the ambidextrous Applegate. And then finally, we're going to cover the Applegate pistol. And what are the key features for the Ambi Applegate pistol? Now, one of the hypotheses we're going to be reviewing in that video is what I call the Applegate grip ratio, which is going to measure the length of the grip versus the width. Now the hypothesis we're going to be testing in that final video is that an elongated grip gives you a better index for point shooting and may re improve your ability to keep the pistol on target versus a more rounder grip that uh, makes it more difficult to, to, to you know, get a firm index on your pistol. Now, um, you know, that's a hypothesis and we'll be testing that using the, uh, uh, using the Mantis X-10 Elite 
um, system that detects movement of the pistol. Now, the uh, counter hypothesis will be that because of the elongated grip, that maybe if you, when you if you have bad technique and pull the trigger, you know, incorrectly or or not gripping the gun correctly, that the with an elongated grip, maybe that will exaggerate that movement. I don't know. We'll be testing that. I so far my preliminary testing. My suspicions are that the first hypothesis is correct. It seems that with this this MC2C, uh, so far it seems that with that elongated grip, it uh, I can shoot this better than I can my Walther PPQ, which has a very oval shape and kind of almost a roundish grip and a very low Applegate grip ratio. And, and it's interesting that I can actually shoot this MC2C better than the Walther because the PPQ definitely has a better trigger than the MC2C. The MC2C is not a bad trigger. It's just, it's, um, you know, it's a little, maybe a little bit better than the Glock. The, the PPQ has an exceptional trigger. It's almost like, um, you know, like a hammer-fired 1911 type trigger. Really good trigger. But... Um, so the fact that I'm able to shoot this pistol better than my PPQ at this point kind of suggests that that maybe this elongated grip or maybe it's just some other issues. We've got so many variables here that we can't quite be sure. But that's what we're going to try to figure out in that final episode, the Ambigate pistol. It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hang around for the next three videos in the Rex Applegate series. Thanks for watching. Competent shooter for what? Knocking down steel plates, uh, uh, shooting bullseyes, hitting silhouettes, or shooting men. A lot of difference. <laughs>